Hi, it's Jen Maleka, the Holistic Health Boss, your functional diagnostic health practitioner and expert. And this week I am sharing with you some hair loss confessions and some solutions for you as well in case you've been struggling with hair loss too. Now, losing your hair is never fun, not for men or women. And I've had countless clients who've experienced hair loss due to thyroid disorders, autoimmune conditions, stress, nutrient deficiencies, and a lot of other reasons. Your hair is basically a part of your identity, so it's not an easy thing to lose. It's what makes you look like who you are. It's part of how you identify with yourself in the mirror, and even how others identify you. I mean, it is a required feature on any type of official ID, such as your driver's license or passport. It is what gives you confidence, makes you feel sexy, attractive, and good about yourself. Even if bald is your thing, it still basically defines you and that might be a choice of yours. So when my hair started falling out a few months ago, I was in denial. My hair has been a treasured part of me since I can basically remember. As a little girl, I loved styling my hair my own ways, and I've never ever had the guts to cut it any short, shorter than shoulder length because I love my luscious locks. <clears throat> but for some reason, when my typical hair shedding increased, I kind of shrugged it off and made excuses for it. I kept telling myself that it was because maybe the seasons had changed or because I went too many days without washing my hair or that I wasn't brushing it enough um, and that I was maybe because I was working more and under a little bit more stress. You know, the usual kind of stuff that we tell ourselves. So I just kept thinking if I just give it time, it will eventually stop. But as the months went by and my hair continued to clog up the shower drain in larger quantities than I had ever seen before, I started to question what my body might actually be trying to tell me. And my hair wasn't falling out by the handfuls, but something was certainly up because this wasn't usual or typical for me. Overall, I had been feeling really great health-wise. My energy was even and it was up. I was sleeping soundly through the night and getting to bed at a really reasonable hour. I was exercising regularly, taking active rest days and being mindful of not overdoing it. And I had recently recommitted to a modified AIP, autoimmune paleo diet, um, with a ketogenic twist to it, again, in order to restore my body after a busy summer schedule. But even with all of that, I was still working more than usual and likely under a little bit more stress than I would even like to probably admit. And we had recently found another source of mold ugh, for the third time in our home, which certainly had could have been a contributing factor. Now, as someone who has been previously diagnosed with Hashimoto's, an autoimmune thyroid disorder, I was also, or I am also at risk for other autoimmune uh, conditions such as alopecia, which affects hair loss. So whatever the reason was for my hair loss, I was determined to basically get to the bottom of it so that I could get back to feeling like myself again with my luscious locks and feeling good in my body. So that's why this week I wanted to share with you more of my confessions about my hair loss and some of the natural solutions that I'm looking into in order to get my luscious locks back once and for all and to keep them that way. Now, the quality of your hair is basically a measurement of your health sometimes. And so I put on my health detective hat and I got to work figuring out what in the world was causing this to happen. Now, the first order of business was to research possible causes for hair loss and which ones might pertain to me specifically given my scenario. Now, some of the most causes of most common causes of hair loss are when thyroid hormone T3 is low, changes in estrogen and progesterone, alopecia, which is an autoimmune um, condition that gets activated and causes hair loss, vitamin or mineral deficiencies, an increase in mental, physical, or emotional stress, toxic, toxic exposures such as mold and heavy metals, drastic changes to your diet, um, and improper scalp care or cleaning, and also poor circulation can be a factor too. 
Now I could relate to just about every one of these risk, risk factors, even though even alopecia, although I had never been diagnosed with it because like I said before, once you have one autoimmune condition, your risk for others actually increases. So I started the process of elimination by checking my thyroid hormones to make sure all was running right and that my Hashimoto's hadn't flared back up again. And this would also give me insights into alopecia. So to my delight, my thyroid hormone and antibodies were practically picture perfect. So I was able to check thyroid and an autoimmune flare up as a possible issue off of my list. Now I exercised daily and didn't have any other symptoms of poor circulation, such as cold hands or feet or muscle fatigue. And although life had been a little bit more workful and stressful, I still had a twice daily meditation ritual in place and I didn't feel an inability to handle stress. So I basically bumped circulation and stress as possible causes lower on my list of potential risk factors. Next, I checked in with my mood, which was stable. My cycle was perfectly timed every 28 days and easy. I was sleeping sac soundly and acne wasn't a problem. So estrogen and progesterone didn't seem to be a culprit necessarily either. So that left me with possible causes such as drastic changes to my diet, vitamin or mineral deficiencies, toxic exposures such as the mold that we found in our house and heavy metals, and maybe improper scalp care or cleaning. So I decided it was time to call in a hair specialist to help me research this further. And I scheduled a microscopic hair analysis appointment at my naturopathic uh, doctor's office. So shout out to Nourish Medical C Center in San Diego for offering such a wonderful service like this for clients. And the analysis confirms I, I certainly had a, a condition called telogen effluvium going on, which can be triggered by a variety of things such as drastic changes in diet, deficiencies, toxins and improper scalp care that I was basically suspicious of. So it's tough to say exactly what was the root cause for the telogen effluvium, and it actually could be a variety of things. So based on my most likely risk factors, here's what I'm currently doing to solve my hair loss issues. I'm loosening up on my ketogenic style diet to boost my food nutrient intake. I'm also remediating the mold and thoroughly cleaning our home from all its toxic remedies um, or remnants. I'm making sure that I take collagen peptides daily to promote hair growth and strength. And I'm consuming lots of gut healing foods and supplements for adequate nutrient absorption and gut healing purposes. And I'm also using a specifically formulated hair um, care products that help to cleanse the scalp properly and promote circulation and strong hair regrowth. So if you or someone you know has been struggling with hair loss, I recommend going through a similar process, a very thorough investigation as I did. Do your research, consider your risk factors, investigate possible causes through the process of elimination, and ultimately support your body naturally through diet, exercise, stress reduction, to and toxin elimination in order to restore those luxurious locks. Now, if you're interested in getting your hands on some of the right lab tests and resources to solve your hair loss struggles so that you too can get back to feeling like yourself again, then I'd like to invite you to schedule a complimentary ideal health and weight discovery session with me by clicking on the links below. I hope that you guys found this insightful. Even if you're not losing your hair, still be aware of some of the things that you can do to prevent any kind of hair loss or to keep it luscious for as long as you can throughout the rest of your life. All right, you guys, that's it. I'll see you next week on the blog.